This video is sponsored by Best Buy. The Galaxy Tab S9 FE was my favorite product of last year, not because it was the best Android tablet out there, but because it delivered on so much of the value that it promised at a great price. And I saw a lot of comments on the video that made me think, hmm, maybe I should revisit this. And it's been about six months, so let's do it. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. And like I said at the top of the video, this was my top product for last year. This device is a really great Android tablet. The FE at the end stands for Fan Edition. A few months before this was released, Samsung released their Tab S9 versions, which came in three different sizes, the standard, the plus, and the ultra. And those are like top of the line tablets with AMOLED screens and all the bells and whistles and a ton of features. What the Fan Edition did is it took out some of those features so that they could reduce the price, get it down to to about $450. And like I said in that initial review, the reason that I thought that it was a good value is because they removed the right features. Oftentimes with these devices, when they shrink them down, they'll take away things like the pen or something that's really important to me, a graphic designer and illustrator, but not here. Also, did you know you can get this tablet at today's sponsor, Best Buy? Because when I'm buying electronics like the Galaxy Tab S9 FE, I make sure that I check out the Best Buy app first to make sure that I am getting the best deal. Just just a few months ago, I was shopping for a new monitor. I wanted something to go into my office that I was in the process of redesigning. It's the one you see behind me in all my videos. I ended up settling on the Samsung Odyssey OLED G8. I love that it's a widescreen. It's also a 34 inch monitor, which is really huge. I honestly didn't know if it would fit in my office. Best Buy's app has this feature called View in My Room. It's like this AR feature that allows you to take any product, whether it's a TV or refrigerator, my 34 inch monitor, and see what it looks like in your space. Move it to different places, spin it around, you get the idea. And it was great because I thought maybe I should go bigger, but that would not fit in my space. I knew that right away. The Best Buy app is the best way to order my product, track that order, or even schedule it for curbside pickup at my local store. And I didn't know this, but you could use the app to go to the store, pick out the product that you want. If you're in a hurry, you can use the app to check out and skip the line. So if you find the product on the app, it'll tell you exactly in the store where it's located. It's tech shopping simplified. More time looking at your product instead of for your product. There's also Best Buy Drops. You can be among the first in the world to snag limited releases and serious savings inside this app. Check out my link down below in the description so you can download and try the Best Buy app on your mobile device today. Okay, so this is scaled down from the standard S9 tablets, but let's roll through the specs real quick so you can get a feel for what's here. The most controversial thing in that review that I said I liked was the Exynos 1380 processors. And there are two different configurations, one with six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, and another one with eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. There's also a micro SD card slot, so if you want more, you can go that route too. Instead of a fingerprint scanner underneath the screen, you've got a fingerprint scanner on the side button, which personally, I kind of like more. Instead of four stereo speakers, you only get two. The USB type C port for charging doesn't have video out. That was a killer for a lot of people as well. You have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera along the front if you're into video calls. And the back camera is an eight megapixel wide angle. If you end up going with the plus size, you'll get two lenses instead of the one that mine has. And one of the big sales points that Samsung was making in a lot of their marketing stuff was that they added water resistance to the tablet as well. And then there's the S Pen. This is pretty much the same S Pen that they use in all of their devices. And this is really the crux of why I liked it so much. To me, when I was using the S9 Ultra and then the S9 FE, just picking up a pen and drawing in my favorite drawing app, when I went from one to the other, I couldn't feel the difference. And that's really where I saw the value. If you're into note taking, of course, if you're into illustration, if you're using the pen a lot, you're still getting the same great pen, you're getting that core functionality that I love in a much cheaper device. And I think that's where the value is. There were several people in the comments who compared this to some of the other tablets out there, the Xiaomi or the OnePlus tab and said, you know, those are better values because you're getting a better processor. And I think if that is the thing that you're looking for, then absolutely that it is a better value, but those don't have pens that are as good as the S Pen. And that's why I like this so much at this price point. The other thing I saw a lot of in the comments was that LCD panel. A lot of folks were just like, yuck, I don't want that. I want the OLED display. And I can understand that. I think what's important to point out here is that this panel actually looks really, really good in person. And I understand that yes, 
OLED is better. But the main reason why is that the floor for quality to OLED is higher, right? So the floor for an LCD display is like way down here. So if you get a bad one, it's really bad. If you get a bad OLED panel, it's, it's still pretty solid. If you get, get a great OLED panel, it could go like way up to here. And on a lot of Samsung's devices, like the Galaxy Tab Ultra, that is a great OLED display. Other devices that I've used that have OLED displays, like I'll pick on one of my favorite devices ever, not a drawing device, but the Nintendo Switch, which now has an OLED display. That is a very nice display. It's a big upgrade over the old LCD display, but that's not a great OLED. It's kind of a really cheap, inexpensive OLED. So it's, it's pretty good. It's better than their old one, but it's not great. It's like right here. So a really good LCD display can be just as good as a mediocre to bad OLED display. And so it's kind of in the same range as just those mid-level OLED displays when you have a really good display like that. And that's that's kind of what I feel or, or where I kind of land with this. But there were two categories of comments from people saying, I don't know about this, Brad, th that I think are really good to mention and I probably should have highlighted more in that initial review. So this tablet does not have video out on that USB type C port like the bigger brothers do. That means you cannot plug this tablet into a monitor and use it that way. And oftentimes people like to do that in like dex mode with their phones or their other tablet and basically turn this tablet it into their all-in-one computer. So that should definitely be something that you're aware of. Now, I did see some misinformation around this that said that it can't use DeX, which it can. And I also saw some comments that said, this also cannot be turned into a second display for your PC. And that true is untrue. You can totally do that. You just can't do that using the video out. So even though they did remove that feature, I think there was some misinformation around what it could and could not do or what exactly that feature was taking away. And the other thing I got a lot of comments for, and I think is a completely legitimate thing, is the processor, that Exynos processor. A lot of people feel that it's just not that good, comparing it to, say, the OnePlus tab. And if you look at benchmarks, the Dimensity processor and the OnePlus pad performs better. And if you look at benchmarks, that's totally true. So that's something to take into consideration that this tablet probably won't last as long as a tablet with a better processor. However, my experience using it and even using it again six months later and drawing on it, I didn't notice any slowdown. So the processor is completely capable for the kinds of tasks I'm putting it through, whether I'm drawing in Clip Studio or whether I'm surfing the web, watching videos, multitasking, writing something on it. Those tasks seemed just as fast fast and snappy here is they do on my Galaxy Tab S9 Ultra, which is much, much faster. Now, where these things really come into play is when we're talking about the longevity of your tablet. Two years, three years down the road, four years down the road, is this going to start to slow down as it gets more updates? That's entirely possible and likely, whereas getting something with a faster processor is going to future-proof you for longer. So looking at the OnePlus tab, I would still go with the FE over that just because the pen is so much better, even if you can squeeze out a little bit more performance power out of the chip. Performance comes into play if you're looking at games, if you're looking at video processing, that sort of thing. But for just everyday tasks or for drawing, this is fine. And so six months later, I still really like this and I still don't have any problem recommending it, especially if you can find it on sale. That's something that happens a lot with Samsung products. I've talked a lot in many, many, many of my videos about the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite, which is like dirt cheap right now. Also, look for the 2022 version of that. Entry level, if you're just looking for a tablet, that is the way to go. That thing, even when I go back to it months later, try it out again, sometimes that does slow down a little bit. That is an underpowered tablet. Not totally underpowered, it's fine for beginners, but you should be aware of the fact that it's, it's not a powerhouse. This is a medium level tablet, a medium grade tablet at a medium grade price. But there's so many little features here that I just, they feel so premium to me. The screen, even though it's not an OLED, still looks really premium to me. The build quality is very premium. I don't think anybody can argue with that. There's just so many little things about the tablet that make it feel higher end than it really is. So for me, the features that you're going to cut, whether we're talking about that USB out or whether we're talking about the processor to get that price down, are totally worth it. For you, they might not be. So I, I hope that helps. Going back to it after six months, I'm still just impressed with it as the day I got it. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.